Hello animators and welcome back. Today we're going to take a lot of the things that we learned in previous episodes and use those tips, tricks, tactics we use to build and implement animations to build one final feature for our base ground movement for this character. It's going to be a polished feature. We're going to add banking, sort of leaning when the player runs. Now, just like those look -ats that we created in the last couple episodes, this is a nice polished feature that just adds fidelity to your character and makes the player feel like their inputs are really being received by the game so that when you swing back and forth while running, your character kind of leans. And we all know from an animation perspective too, that that's just gonna make the, f the character feel more physical and grounded because it's more how we move in real life. You don't walk around like a, a, a perfectly upright board when you run around, you kind of like lean and bank into your actions. So how that's gonna work is we're gonna build a couple of lean animations derived from our base run in Maya. And then similar to our previous episodes, we're gonna go into Unreal and do all the implementation for that. Now, the implementation, like some of the things that we've worked on in the past is gonna require a little bit of math and a little bit of thinking to kind of get the data that we need to drive this kind of lean. But hopefully you've kind of learned enough along the way that it shouldn't be too challenging to kind of follow along and get this working pretty nicely. So let's go into Maya first and build our lean animations before we jump into the game. All right, so here we are in Maya. And as I said, we're gonna derive this animation from our already existing runs. So of course I opened up our previous run that we animated in a previous episode and kind of had polished up. That's where we're gonna start to build these leans on top of it, okay? So let's talk a little bit about my working layout here. Uh, I ended up deciding on putting my two windows here side by side and the two views that are gonna be kind of important for us working today are this perspective view so we can you know, obviously rotate around the character. But I also pulled up and split between this back view because this is the axes we're gonna be working in most. Um, if you don't know how to open up a orthographic back view like this, you can just go to panels here and go to orthographic and you'll have a bunch of options there. If it doesn't show up, you can hit new and it'll give you even more. Uh, and if you aren't sure how to do this split screen, you can go to panels, layouts, and there's a whole bunch of options here as to how you can organize your Maya viewport here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull out the controls that we're gonna use for these lean animations onto a layer so we can build our lean animations on top of this animation without doing any destructive uh, work to our already existing layers. In fact, I'm gonna lock out all of my existing layers here in the, in, the, in the layer panel so we're actually not accidentally even messing with them. So let's go ahead and select I'm gonna use the layout. We're gonna use the uh, feet controls. Uh, we're probably gonna use these knees as well. Um, what else? We're definitely gonna use the spine and the pelvis and cog for these. And then let's also grab our arm controls. We'll just kind of grab this whole torso, the neck, the head, I'm not sure if we'll use everything. Oh, I just misselected everything, so let's grab again. Boop, boop, uh, where is the knees? I don't know which ones the knees are on the, uh, the controller here. And then the arms, and that will be a good starting point for us to uh, work with from a control scheme standpoint, okay? So let's now say uh, add a layer using selected, which is this button on the right, it'll generate a layer using all the controls that you currently have selected. And actually, I'm not sure if I actually added the layout one, doesn't look like it, so let's add that onto here. We'll say add selected objects. Um, and then the last control that might be important to us are the foot roll controls, uh, which I believe are these guys. So let's grab those as well and put them on this animation layer. Okay, so now we kind of have everything that we're going to work with on a layer. We have everything else locked, so we're not going to be messing any of it up. So first, what we're going to be building here are essentially, essentially the most extreme versions of the lean pose that we expect our character to be able to do. So the most extreme bank pose for left and right we're going to be building on a layer here. Okay, so let's take a look over here in this back view and we're going to grab the layout and we're going to use that to create our initial uh, kind of lean to the right. Okay, so let's take it only about 20 degrees. We don't want to be like too crazy here. Um, and oh, and we want to set a key on this here before we get too far. 
Actually, let's select all the objects on this layer. Select objects and make sure we have them all keyed on this layer. Um, and then now let's select that layout control and give it that 20 degrees to the right, okay? Now you can see, of course, that this puts that foot through the ground, and that's why we also put these feet on these layers so that we can uh, adjust them accordingly. So what we're gonna do is go through on the foot, the positions where the foot is actually on the ground, and we're gonna key all of those. Okay, and then the ones where they're through the air, we're gonna kind of let them be what they are for now. We're just trying to establish that when the foot is on the ground, we're just gonna adjust our poses a little bit to make sure that they're actually impacting the ground correctly. Okay, I'm gonna put one key here in the center when they, they, just to kind of track where that foot was passing through. Okay, so let's just grab this foot now on frame one and start adjusting this. And we're gonna do it in this orthographic view so that we know we're only uh, dealing with one angle. Okay, and I'm just going to per frame go through quickly and adjust this to actually be uh, falling directly on the ground as our starting point. We'll worry about kind of getting it to all match up perfectly later, but generally speaking, you can kind of power through a lot of the uh, initial posing here just by using this orthographic view and quickly uh, kind of adjusting it to line up with the ground. There may even be a faster way to do this, but I find this is just the kind of most quick and intuitive way to do it. And this first pose, we're just gonna copy and paste over here to our last one, boop. Uh, for some reason that didn't work. Oh, well, we're a little bit through the ground for some reason. Let's try to fix that. I'm not sure why my vertical axis is not keying correctly. Let's try it again. Oh, there it all looks correct now. Okay, I don't know, I guess it was just a visual bug. Boop -ba -doo. okay. So let's fix these last two poses here. Um, let's see what this looks like. Which pose is this? I guess this is not quite the contact yet. So this is the contact here. Um, the foot's gonna be kind of up like that. And then come down. Now these don't need to be, you know, absolutely perfect, but we want to kind of get them, you know, at least aligned with the ground. So now let's do the same thing with our uh, roll here. So I grabbed the roll control and let's kind of find the opposed to the air that's kind of how we want it. And then start setting a few keys on these grounded poses. And we're, I'm just gonna use this to tilt and kind of reposition the foot a little bit. I know this is kind of like tedious work, but also doesn't need to be hugely uh, exact uh, because, you know, it it's gonna kind of be a blend in game and uh, you're not gonna notice if it's a little bit imperfect, to be totally honest. So let's copy this pose from the beginning here to the end. And you can see that I'm just like one frame at a time, just adjusting it really quick. I'm not really spending a lot of time on it, but let's kind of look at now from this perspective view and see it actually doesn't look too bad. The point is to just get it to kind of like track along the ground correctly. And for the most part, it's maintaining, you know, what it did in the original animation, okay? So let's go ahead and do the same exact process on this other foot very quickly. We'll find the points where uh, it's tracking along the ground. So here is our contact. So let's start keying it there. It's still on the ground, still on the ground, still on the ground, still on the ground. And there's where it kind of like lifts off. So actually let's delete that last one. Uh, and once again, I'm gonna key the kind of in air pose because we want that to kind of stay where it was. And let's start going ahead on these contact poses. We'll get it down there under the ground. Fixing this just really fast. These animations shouldn't really take you too long. You know, you can kind of just eyeball it. It doesn't need to be uh, super artistic it's more of a science more of a process than in, than anything uh the goal is to just get these feet looking like they're sitting contacting the ground oops uh, okay last frame here on the ground great now let's grab the uh the roll as well and we're going to do the same thing we did before we're going to kind of key the passing pose there 
and then find all the ones that are on the ground and adjust them one at a time. Okay. So here's the first pose on the ground, the kind of contact. We're just going to rotate it to kind of match the angle of the leg on each frame. I'm just scrubbing through using my hotkeys and fixing each consecutive frame. Okay, let's take a look over here in our perspective view and see what those feet look like now. So not too bad. They're contacting on the ground. Feels like the character's leaning. We're doing pretty well, okay? So next up, let's do a little bit of work on the spine, okay? We want to take the spine. I'm just going to grab all the spine controls together. And since the character is kind of, we'll look, we'll look here in the perspective view. Since the character is kind of turning to the right here, I'm just going to add a little bit of subtle rotation towards the right and also kind of lean the character that way a little bit too. Um, I'm just setting this, these, this just one key here on frame one. And we can even do a little bit to the head as well. Let's have the head look a little bit this way and maybe like tilt a little bit so that the character is like looking into the direction they're running a little bit. Let's play it and see what it looks like. Okay. Now, the one thing that we're also going to have to adjust now is this arm, which is uh, we're, we have some clipping with the ground here. So let's build, let's put a mesh on the ground so we can see the frames that it's clipping and kind of make an adjust pose for this arm here. We probably want to bring like bend the elbow a little bit more to uh, well, actually, you know, maybe we can adjust the spine a little bit even more in that direction and maybe not lean quite as much. So we're not getting like quite as much clipping into the ground. We'll pull that back a little bit. Now let's kind of scrub through and see the clipping is not too bad, except right through here. Um, so what we can do is actually, I'm just going to grab the, uh, all my arm controls here. We'll grab the wrist the elbow and the upper arm and on my layer once again i'm just going to kind of key every like key my extremes so here's kind of my uh, let's see like my kind of extreme forward there's kind of my extreme back and we're going to look where it's clipping with the ground and try to just adjust it a little bit to get it up out of there and since, you know, we have uh, the, the core animation on that base layer, as long as we don't adjust this too much, we should be able to sort of wiggle room it to get the, uh, to get the uh, keyframes we want out of the ground and still uh, have the rest of the animation feel pretty good. Um, I'm going to actually move this key or delete this key here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, I accidentally bumped my, uh, I think I bumped my key off the end here doing something. Let's see. What did I accidentally do here? Oh yeah. I accidentally moved everything. There we go. Um, so I adjusted this pose up there and I'm going to actually move this key back. So it cushions into that pose. We just made a little bit more and let's see, where is the other part where it's clipping kind of like right through here. And so I think generally speaking, what we want now that I'm looking at it is to just have this hand be a little bit more forward and not dragging so far. Um, so let's just kind of have that be true. I'm doing whatever I need to do to try to get it to mostly not clip through the ground. If some of those spikes go through the ground a tiny bit, I'm not too worried about it. That's just, you know, you can have that, but you don't want it to be like, obviously, um, you know, chunking through the ground too much. And then the last thing we can do maybe is um, have this upper arm be, you know, here, let's uh, let's actually just set one key on this upper arm to kind of have it be even up a little bit more. Let's see what that looks like. And there you go. We got like a pretty decent, uh, animation on it still, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not clipping through the ground quite so much anymore. Now, I might've been able to do a better job at that, but we're just trying to get something in the game to uh, start with. Uh, and you know what? 
you know what? I lied. We're gonna do a better version of this. Let's try to let's try to instead bring that arm kind of up into a more. You, you get to watch me experimenting here. Let's try to bring that arm up into a little more a pose, like held closer to the body. So what I'm gonna do is to clear out the animation on that. I'm gonna remove the arm from this and then re-add it to this layer. And this might be a folly. Maybe I'll decide to go back to the other way. But what I'm going to do is just set a single key and try to repose this arm to be a little bit more uh, like held close to the body during this right version. And he'll bring this weapon actually up towards his chest a little bit. And we'll see if we can get that to now not clip. Hey, now look at that. So that's like a good solution maybe. Uh, we don't have any clipping anymore. I can probably actually now adjust it back a little bit to still maintain that feeling of the character kind of dragging it behind. Uh, and let's scrub now and see if we have got rid of most of that clipping. It looks like all the clipping is gone there. And so we get something that actually feels a little bit more natural with just, um, you know, as you kind of would like lean to the right, you'd pull that in a little bit more under your center of gravity, okay? So that's where I'm going to stop for this one. I'm going to quick rename this layer to be called Lean Right. And let's save this file out as a new run. We'll call it Run F with Leans, just so that we have an iteration of this uh, for when we export it. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is if you look at this orthographic view, our character is, uh, it, this is kind of the center line here. In game, if we put this animation in game right now, our character is going to be leaning way out away from center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my, um, just to, just for the sake of in game, trying to keep the character centered around the camera a little bit, I'm going to take my uh, root control here, I'll just, just on this one frame, and nudge it back so the character is a little bit more over the center that instead not only are they leaning out to the right but they're also pushing the feet out to the side a little bit as they bank as part of it in an effort to try to get the character still kind of like centered over uh the center of the screen where our camera is we can kind of adjust that later if we need to in game but with that i'm going to kind of play this uh, from a couple views here so you can kind of see it um, i'll turn off the controls and you can kind of see this banking animation playing characters kind of leaning over that way if we look at this one here, same deal, okay? And we'll have to kind of see what this looks like in game. We might modify it some more later, but I think it's a pretty good starting point. Now, at this point, I'm gonna go through and make the left one. I'm gonna use all the same exact tactics just in the opposite direction, and then I'll come back around and show you the final versions before we take them over into the game. All right, so with just a few minutes more work, I was able to generate the left version of this lean as well. And I'm gonna kind of show you the finished project before we export it and getting into the game, okay? So as I talked about, we have our base layer here. If we play it without our lean layers turned on, it's just our normal forward run. However, if we turn on either of these layers, we get the corresponding right run. Uh, let's turn that back off. And if we turn on this layer up here, we get the corresponding left run. Okay, now, once again, we can come back and polish these more afterwards if we want to. But the idea here is to just get some starting assets to get into Unreal and blend, build our blend spaces. That's it for the Maya portion of this tutorial. Now, as I noted when making these, it's not a science. You just sort of feel it out and try to get them to kind of look right. The important piece is to get them in game quickly so that if there's issues, we can come back and iterate on them in Maya later. And we'll kind of do a sort of self-feedback session at the end of this to make sure that these actually look like what we want and maybe identify some things we can improve about them if we want them to look a little bit better in the future. But since it's important to get them into game early, we're going to export them now and hop over into Unreal. So the export process is just like any other uh, animations we've exported previously. You just turn on the layers that you want to export, and we're going to export just that right pose or that right run and the left run. And then we're going to go into Unreal and build a blend space and get these things implemented into our game. So let's hop over into Unreal and see what we can do. All right, so here we are back in Unreal, and I just finished importing my assets. So we're going to make sure that they look good, and then we're going to assemble them into a blend space that we can use to drive this lean. So let's take a look. We've got our forward run. Nothing really changed much about that. But let's take a look at these new leans that we made. So we've got the lean left. 
Characters leaning to the left looks pretty much exactly like in Maya. Let's kind of rotate around it just to make sure. Looks pretty good. And our lean right. Same deal, looks pretty good, looks like a good starting point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all of these into a blend space. So let's go over here to our content browser and we'll start by just right clicking on the run animation and say create. Oh, actually you can't do that. You actually have to create a blend space separately. So let's right click here and we'll say animation and let's find our animation blend space. And we're actually gonna make a little bit of a more complicated blend space here uh, than before. We're gonna, we're gonna make a, one that has more than one axis. So let's just click the blend space option here. And we wanna find our skeleton. Blend spaces are skeleton specific. So let's search for Thor and we're gonna make it using this skeleton. And let's call this uh, locomotion blend, okay? Let's open this baby up. And as you see, when you open it, there's no animations in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all of our traversal and idle animations and everything all into one blend space with the vertical axis being speed and the horizontal axis axes being our lean animations. So let's go over here to um, these axes and open them up and let's actually name them appropriately to start. So let's say speed is our vertical axis. And our horizontal axis is gonna be, let's call it, we'll just call it lean, okay? And we wanna make sure that these scales here make sense to us. We're not quite sure what our lean axis is gonna be, but we know we want it to be negative probably in one direction and positive in the other, because you're gonna be leaning left or right, and it's probably gonna be like a positive or negative value that we're gonna to wanna to put in there. We're not quite sure how it's gonna map yet because we haven't built the data. So let's just kind of pick an arbitrary number and make it the minimum negative 10 and the maximum positive 10. Now the speed, um, we actually can go look at what our max speed is. Let's go back to our um, uh, content browser here and go find our Thor pawn. Now I'm gonna be honest, I don't quite remember what our pawn was called. So let's search for pawn uh, under, oh, maybe it wasn't pawn, controller I think is what it's called. Nope, what is it called? What was our character called? I should know this, shouldn't I? You know what, here we're gonna do some cool uh, Unreal navigation tips to find this. Let's go, one of the cool things about Unreal is everything is connected, so if, something is being used by the character controller, you can go find it by searching from that item. I'll kind of show you how that works. If we go find our Thor animation blueprint here, we can right click on it. This is the one we're using and say reference viewer, and it will show us that it's being used by the third person character. And we can actually now go browse to that and find it. And there it is. There's our pawn that we were using the controller. So let's click on that to open it up, get rid of our content browser out of the way. This is a cool trick for just kind of, uh, you know, finding um, assets through their connections. Um, and I think it opened it up back here in this tab. Sorry about the organization there. And where we're gonna be looking is on this character movement component. So this is our controller. We haven't been here in a while, but if we go click here on the character movement, we can find what our max speed is by scrolling down here into the walking settings and whatnot. And we can see that our max walk speed is 600. And I think we looked that up previously, but it's just a good little refresher on how to find your core movement settings. So we know that that's gonna be the fastest that our character can currently run. So on this blend space now, we navigate back here, we know that our maximum value on this axis is gonna be 600, and that's where our runs are gonna be peaked out at, okay? So now that we've got the parameters of our blend space set up, let's actually plug in the correct animations. So we know that our run F, our middle one, is gonna be here at the center at speed 600, and no lean. Now we aren't quite sure yet which one of these axis is gonna be our right or our left. So let's just guess right now and put the right on the right uh, by plopping it up here in the corner and our left on the left. And we might have to switch them later if they end up being backwards. But the last thing we're gonna do is down here at zero speed, we're gonna put our idle animations at both the center and the corners so that we can get a uh, full blend space that's functional. Okay, so if you kind of hold down shift, you can pull this little green dot around and see 
the animations playing at the different speeds, different leans. You can see that as our character leans back and forth, they're going to get a nice blend between these. And if you're playing with a uh, you know controller or something and you actually run at these lower speeds, you'll get a blend through here, even though it doesn't look very great, which we can talk about later. But I want to build this functionality into it for later. Um, primarily what we're worried about now is though this peak speed up here uh, where our uh, lean assets are going to play. Okay, and that's it for now for our blend space setup. Now we're going to hop over to the animation blueprint and actually build the data that's going to be used to drive our back and forth lean. At this point we have our blend space all set up we have all the animations kind of structured to be able to function in game, but we don't really have any data to drive it. So let's talk for a minute about what we actually want to figure out to drive these animations. Essentially, the piece of data that we're looking for is how fast is the character rotating back and forth? Now that sounds like it might be easy, but from game terms, it ends up being a little bit complicated. Uh, essentially, what we're trying to look for is to check each tick of the game, whether my direction that I I'm moving, my rotation on my character has changed. Now, when I say tick, what I mean is every game as it's func functioning in the background runs at a tick rate. Okay. And what that means is essentially just like how fast the game is updating. And every update of the game, data gets calculated again. And then the next tick, it gets updated again and again and again. So, what we can check is we can check on one tick what our rotation was. And then when the next tick happens, when data is updated again, we can check if there's a change from the previous tick. And what that will essentially get us is a yaw rate, a rotation rate of the character, how much the character's rotation has changed since the game last updated. So hopefully that kind of concept makes sense. But I'll reiterate it here as we actually do the math to figure it out. So let's get into the animation blueprint and I'm going to talk through the, the slightly complicated math to get our change of rotation per tick rate to drive this blend space. All right, so here we are back in our animation blueprint, one of our favorite places to be. And this is where we're going to calculate our data to drive that blend space we just created. Now, if you see me looking over here at all, it's because I'm referencing my notes. I'm not a super genius who knows how to do everything, so I had to do this in advance, and I will be referencing my notes over here a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, we're going to be doing exactly what I just described. We're going to be trying to create a variable that will give us the rate of change per tick of the rotation of our character while moving. Now, that while moving part is key because we don't really want to be calculating this when we're not moving. We only care about it when we are moving around and running, right? And as generally speaking, you never really want to be calculating data if you can avoid it when you don't really need it because it's just going to bog down the performance of your game. So the very first thing we're going to do is check if you're moving. So if we right click, we actually already have a variable for that, which is is moving. We built this previously and we can pull off of this to create a branch to only trigger this logic if the character is actually moving. Okay, now we're gonna need three pieces of data to drive this thing. The eventual piece we want is a float, a value that is the yaw rate of the character. So let's create that now. Um, I actually already created a yaw rate variable, but uh, if you wanna create a new one, you can go down here to your variables and you wanna to go to create and change it to a float and you can call it yaw rate. But since I already have it, I'm just gonna pull it out here onto the field and I'm gonna say, we're gonna eventually set the yaw rate, right? Because this is the thing we're gonna set at the end. Now, of course, the other two pieces of data I need are my current controller rotation and my controller rotation from last tick. Now, one of those we actually already have, we calculated as part of our point of interest. If you kind of follow the logic we had here, we actually set a variable called the controller yaw, uh, taking it from the forward vector of the character. So we can just use that one that we previously created. So let's right click and search for controller yaw. And we wanna get that controller yaw because we're gonna use that to check whether it's the same uh, as the yaw from our last tick. Now, nowhere in the nowhere in the blueprint yet have we calculated the yaw from last tick, so we're going to need that variable as well. So, just like before, let's create a new float variable, and we'll call it controller yaw last tick. 
Okay, and we're gonna pull that out and get it as well. Now, what we wanna check is, are those two things the same? Essentially, is my controller yaw now the same as it was last tick? So let's do a equal, well, let's do not equal. We'll check if they're not equal because essentially we wanna cha change this yaw rate if they're not equal. And we'll turn this into a branch based off of that. And now we have something to actually plug in to this other branch, which says if we're moving, we want to start trying to check for this, right? So if we're moving, then we want to check, is my controller yaw now different than my controller yaw from last tick? Now, if it is different, uh, what we want to do is a subtraction of these two, okay? now. It's gonna be this same logic here. And I kind of explained this before that this is subtracting to uh, you know 360 to 360 float values that represent the rotation of the character is the yaw in some like world space thing. I don't I'm not gonna go through and explain how all the math works. It's just a cool little bit of math that we can copy that essentially will give us the difference between two rotational yaw float values, okay? So don't ask too many questions about it. We're just gonna grab it and reuse it down here. But in this case, what we're actually gonna be or subtracting uh, are these two values. Because if they're different, we wanna get what the difference between them actually is in a simple, uh, in a simple value, okay? So that is gonna then plug in to our yaw rate. Okay, so let's talk through what we have so far. We have, if you are moving, you're gonna check if the controller yaw now on this tick is the same as the controller yaw from last tick. If it's not, if, that's tr if it's true that it's not the same, then we wanna get the difference between them and set our yaw rate to that. Okay, so the yaw rate's gonna be bigger if the rotational change is bigger. Right, So we're gonna get more of a lean, more yaw rate value, the further you're moving per tick. Now, the last thing we wanna do here is if they are different, then we wanna actually update them on this tick to make sure that they're the same again so that we can check again next tick if it's changed more. Now, how we're gonna do that is we're just gonna right here at the end say set our controller yaw last tick. And we're basically gonna reset it to our current yaw again. Now let me explain that one more time because it might not be super clear. If the controller yaw from last tick doesn't match the current controller yaw, once we do the calculation to figure out how much it's changed, we wanna reset it so that when we check again next tick, we're just checking the change between this current one and the next in the last tick, right? So we want to reset it every tick so that on the following tick, it uh, it updates and gives us the correct yaw rate output. Now, if in this false option, if these things end up be this, being the same, we want to actually set our yaw rate to zero because we don't want the character to be rotating at all in that instance if there's no difference between these two. Okay, and that pretty much wraps up the logic here. So let's let's test this out. We'll plug this in to our sequence here so that it happens after all this other stuff. And just so that we can see this kind of playing out in game, let's print out this yaw rate onto our screen. Now, I don't know if we've really used this before, but there's a cool little debugging uh, bit here you can do in Blueprint. You can say print string. And we'll plug that in here at the end. And if you drag these yaw rates into this, what it will do is it will print out that value of the yaw rate um, onto the screen. Actually, sorry, I need I can't drag them directly from there because I can only do it from one. We want to get the yaw rate and print it out here. And we want to make sure that each of these flow into this as well so that we get the print regardless of uh, which one of these paths it takes, okay? And we can kind of pull this down here to get it out of the way by double clicking on it. So what we're gonna see, hopefully, is our yaw rate printing out on the screen. And ideally, if this is working correctly, when we're just moving straight forward, our yaw rate should be zero or close to zero. And as we rotate the character left and right, 
our yaw rate should go up or down. So let's see if it actually works, if it's actually true in game. Okay, so you can see that if I'm not moving, nothing's printing on the screen, but if I start moving, I do get a value. And as I turn to the left, it looks like it's going negative, and as I go to the right, it's giving me a positive number. And we can kind of see, I don't know how well it's getting recorded, but it looks like the value kind of goes up to, you know, five, six, seven, eight or so in each direction at the most extreme, um, uh, extreme value. So we can adjust our blend space now based on that. Okay, so now we have the two pieces that we need to put this together. We now have all the pieces we need to actually finish the implementation of these leans. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that data that we just calculated and that blend space that we made and in our animation blueprints run state, we're going to put that blend space in there and use the data to actually drive the lean back and forth on our character as the game is actually playing. So let's go over into the animation graph portion of the animation blueprint and actually update our state machine to use all this stuff that we just created. Let's navigate from our event graph back over to our animation graph and find our run state. So well, we can hop to our animation graph using this menu here by just clicking into the animation graph, which will bring us to our state machine that we can click into. Now, the state we're going to be editing, of course, is this run state. And currently, we just have our one run animation playing in here. We're going to replace this with our new blend space. So I believe we called this uh, locomotion blend. So we can bring that in here. And we're going to plug this in instead of our base animation. And then our lean, we're going to plug in our lean axes to be, to be driven by that yaw rate uh, variable that we just created. So if we pull off of this, we can actually search for yaw rate, plug that in there. And we also want to add in uh, our speed, our horizontal speed as well to uh, make sure that we're actually at the right on the right spot in the vertical axes of this blend space. So if we go down here, we already had our horizontal speed that we previously calculated. You can click drag it right up into this pin and boop, plug it in, okay? So theoretically, this should work. Let's take a look in game and see if all of our hard work paid off or if we need to actually make some changes to this blend space. So let's move this out of the way and hit play and see if our character leans. And it actually looks like it does, but it's very jittery. You can see that as we are going back and forth, the character is sort of like jittering uh, back and forth uh, because that, va that variable is changing so quickly. So what we can do now is we can actually go to our blend space and uh, update it to be a little bit softer. The other thing that I noticed is that it's not actually ever reaching the maximum, uh, you know, the maximum ends of our blend space. It's kind of just leaning a tiny bit. So what we can do is reduce the values in those axes to get a better result. So we can actually just leave the game here running and let's go back and find our locomotion blend, we can click on it. And we can actually look at these at the same time. We'll pull this up here and kind of uh, move our viewport around here a little bit so we can actually uh, see this updating at the same time. So first off, um, you know, we noticed that we weren't ever reaching the maximum lean. And that's because our maximum lean isn't going to be reached till our yaw value gets to 10 or negative 10. And if you remember when we were printing it on the screen, we were never actually getting that far. It was kind of going up to six or seven or so. So why don't we adjust this to be closer to what the maximum yaw rate actually is going to be and maybe try negative seven in each direction and positive, or sorry, in negative seven in one direction and seven in the positive direction. Now, the other thing we saw was that uh, it was very jittery, and that's because we aren't don't allow any interpolation time between our uh, blends here. It's basically saying like whatever the value is, you snap to it instantly. So when that value is jumping quickly, you're getting like big jittery jumps. So we can add a little bit of interpolation time here. Maybe we can start with 0.3 to kind of see what that looks like. Uh, this means it's going to take 0.3 seconds to reach the correct spot on the blend space from where it was previously. And let's see what that kind of gets us. So here we are now 
leaning around when we turn. You can see the character kind of like leaning into them. It's a little bit more uh, softened out now, but I'm still not seeing uh, us getting as often to our sort of maximums. And I think it could, it might even still be a little bit more jittery than I would like. So let's reduce this again, maybe down to negative six and six, and maybe amp this interpolation time up to 0.4 and save this. Let's see what that gets us now. So it looks like we're actually getting now a pretty smooth rotation. Okay, so let's get rid of this out of the way and take a look at this full screen. So running forward, we don't really get anything. If I run to the right, I get a little bit of lean. And if I run to the left, I get a little bit of lean. And it's pretty smooth if I go back and forth between them. Now, I think you could argue that maybe my assets could be a little bit more exaggerated or more extreme. And, you know, I actually agree with that. We could probably have the character in general, like literally leaning more. You know, if you're kind of rotating around at these maximum rotations, um, I would expect the character to maybe like lean into it a little bit more. But that's sort of an asset question, not a uh, uh, implementation question here. So that's kind of it for the implementation. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how we could improve this in the future. Now that we've got all the pieces together in Unreal and we see it working in game, it's a great time, as I always say, to reflect and try to give ourselves a self critique and really look at maybe taking some notes about how we could improve what we just made in the future. So let's just run around a little bit and try to make two, three notes that we could use to go back and edit the assets in the future to get a better look. Let's take some notes now on how we could improve the assets and maybe even the data here to get a better look in the future. There's two things that kind of stand out to me pretty quickly when just looking at this running around. The first is, as I noted before, I think the character could just lean more in general. Uh, I, if you remember in Maya, we had the character only leaning about 20 degrees from the root. I think we could probably push it to be more like 30 or maybe even closer to 40 degrees on the maximum turns. Cause you know, banking in on these, I think you could, could exaggerate that a little bit more. The other thing that stands out as part of that is that if the character just kind of feels stiff throughout, you don't really get much of the lean in the upper body that we built into there cause it was pretty subtle. So I think if I, uh, you know, I could go back to the asset I would increase the amount the character leans, as well as trying to get some of that through the upper body a little bit more to loosen up the character. Now that may create some problems with the weapon. You know, we saw that we were having some clipping with the ground, but those are just the kind of things that we might have to deal with as part of that. Um, the other, the second sort of feedback I have is more of a data one, which is as I do these extreme turns, I'm seeing this like loss in speed where the character kind of comes, you, you see uh, as I do a very extreme uh, changes, sometimes I see the character kind of come down into almost like an idle pose in that blend space because the speed ends up being so low. Now here's the problem with that. The problem is, is that we built this blend space to go from zero speed up to 600. And we have that idle at the bottom of that. And here we can even go back and look at it. Uh, we have the idle animation at the bottom of this blend space here. And our run at the top. But the problem is, is we slow down these in-between things because we don't have any animation information here are giving us this kind of weird, goofy, slow, somewhere in between animation. Okay, so there's kind of two ways that we could solve that in the future. One is for now, we could actually just clip the speed in the data and say, hey, you know, when you're running around, we just always play the 600 speed one. Alternatively, if you wanted to do more work, if you wanted to really improve the fidelity of this, it would probably be beneficial for us to actually make a whole set of runs at 300 speed so that when your speed sort of reduces to 50% around here, you actually have an animation to play. I'm not gonna sit here and do that right now, but that is a way that we could significantly improve the fidelity of this. For now, I'm just gonna do the quick clipping the speed solution, which is instead of plugging our horizontal speed into this for now, we're just gonna say, hey, always play 
whatever's at 600 speed on this blend space. And for the moment, that should mostly eliminate that sort of slowdown of the animation when the character is actually slowing down in speed. Now, technically, that's probably creating some sliding under the hood, but I think that's a better look than the sort of artificial, uh, goofy slowdown that we were seeing when the speed goes really low. So that kind of leaves us in a place where we have most of the ground locomotion features built. You know, we have idling, we have stopping, we have lookats all built in there, and we have even now leaning while running around. And there's a lot of places we could expand this in the future, but for now, that's a pretty good place to be to sort of wrap our core ground locomotion features and assets. So animators, here we are at the end of the core feature set for basic locomotion. These features that I've kind of outlined here are more or less the features that I build on most characters first to just get them running around the game. Now, there's lots of ways you could expand on this or improve that, and I would encourage you to maybe explore some of those now. The first thing I always like to do when I kind of get to this point on a character is to look at the whole feature set now together and see, hey, where can I improve animations? Where can I improve transitions? Where are the weak points that I have in this current set of animations? Because your character is only as good as the weakest assets on it. If there's a blend somewhere that doesn't look very good or a transition that's kind of meh, those are the kind of things you want to go and fix now. So if I was to look at what we currently built, I think an area I might want to improve is the idle animation. It's pretty simple. The pose I'm not super happy with. And maybe I would go back and now that all the features around it are in there, would maybe try to build a little bit of a stronger idle pose and idle animation. So generally now is a good time to just level up the whole set of assets that we've created because you can see them all playing together in the game. Now, if you want to expand on this and actually build some new transitions to kind of amp up the fidelity of this, one set that we didn't really build in this that would be a nice little mwah to the fidelity would be to add run start animations. And I think I alluded to this before when talking about the transition animations, uh, but the one that we're kind of missing that could help things a little bit is when you start running, having a special animation where the character kind of leans forward and ramps up to speed. Now, how you build that is by just adding a new state to our state machine called run start that instead of idle going straight to the run animation, much like our stop, it would transition through an idle start and then into the run. What would the rules look like there? Well, you just put your run start animations in there. And once they're done playing, you'd have a transition rule into your run that says something like, hey, when my animation's time remaining is 0.2, I start transitioning into my run animation. It should be some pretty straightforward logic that with all the things that we learned this far, you should be able to easily build. Now it gets tricky as with all things in game animation. You know, if you start doing run starts, well, you also need to do leans for them and whatnot as well to get them to blend in to all the other assets that we've created. If you want to really expand beyond that, I'd encourage you to maybe explore some things like jumping. I may do some tutorials on the more advanced locomotion stuff in the future, but I think if you go look at what's out there in the, you know, in the Unreal uh, world on YouTube and whatnot, you'll probably now have the sort of knowledge to be able to go find some of the cool things uh, that you want to do and add to your character. So thanks for following along on this basic locomotion workshop. And I hope you learned a lot. And I hope that you'll check out my future videos if I do some on more advanced things. Until next time, happy animating.